Recording in progress. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, welcome back to Barbells and Banter episode 10, guys. Uh, so we got the boys back on. It's been a minute since we had all the guys on. Um, yeah, we got lots to talk about, lots of prep updates, training updates, injury updates, mm-hmm. looking at the Band-Aid in the corner. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and Daddy Mo here has a, uh, a nice little fit on once you see it. You guys jealous of my jean shirt? Jean shirt, man. Dude, that's that's actually sick. I like it. This is dope as hell. I'm big as fuck. I do what I want. <laughs> Guess who made him buy that? Oh. Well, you you definitely helped. Dude, I, I convinced the shit out of you to buy that. Dude, I was I was gonna get I wasn't against it. I was thinking about it. You were like, yeah, yeah. I guess I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I just needed a little bit of reassurance. Yeah, yeah. Where'd yeah, you get it? Walmart. Yeah. Really? I yeah, like it. Was it was like 25 or 30 bucks or something. Good <laughs> so quality too. It's snug on the fucking airs. Looks like yeah, it. Man. It's a Wrangler, isn't it? Wrangler, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> like if I had to go fight zombies, this is the shit I Exact outfit. That's sick. Little bandana going on. Yeah, could do that. You definitely could do that. Yeah. It had to be red, red bandana. That'd be sick. <laughs> That'd be sick. I don't have a chainsaw as a weapon. A chainsaw? Two chainsaws, bro. <laughs> Two chainsaws. We're just a straight up chain, Mo. Just walking down the street, just whoosh, with a full chain. <laughs> That'd be nuts. I don't know. So what's so on the go with? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know with you guys. I, I'm, I've been living in the West End. I barely see you guys now. Yeah, it's a rough build. Yeah, the West End's different. It's different out here, man. Mm-hmm. People are different. I haven't really associated myself with many people yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different just, breed out there, man. Yeah, I got a whole new gym scene going on. Yeah. How, how are you finding that? Love it, man, so far, honestly. Yeah. What time do you go? I'm like, it, it's a two-minute drive, right? Yeah. So, like, that's perfect. And uh, especially where I my cardio right now for prep is, like, walk my dogs, like, most of the time. Unless yeah. it's, like, a shitty day outside. So after I train, I can get home in like two minutes and walk the dogs. And like, that's my post workout cardio. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't like stretch, stretch out my day too much, right? No. Yeah. No, it's perfect, man. That's perfect. Uh, that's what you want in prep, too, right? You want you want something that's easy, routine, kind of just flows. Your days kind of flow better. It makes it much easier. Yeah, man. Like, uh, you know, between that and work, like, my goal every day is kind of try to be done everything by like 7 or 7 30. Yeah. So I can just like chill. Like, I kind of need a couple hours at the end of the day. Right? So I've been able to do that because of that, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm pumped about that. No, and my, my, I trained legs a couple of days ago. My quads good to go. So. Oh, okay, wicked. Yeah, that was good, eh? What? That was good, eh? Oh yeah, that was sick. Like did leg press squats, all that shit. So. Yeah, I seen. It didn't look like you're having a problem. <laughs> uh, but then I, I started doing Bulgarians at the end, and this was, you guys have seen this happen to me at the end of workouts and split squats. My, yeah. I, I had like a little hamstring like to be. Yeah, but like, well, like, it's like, sketchy for me sometimes too. Yeah, like that, like where my hamstring goes in my glute. Yeah. Like towards the end of my workout, like I don't know if I'm getting like dehydrated or something. Like, mm. but uh, yeah, like I did one set and my second set, like I felt it a little bit. So I literally just stopped and put the dumbbells away and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> yeah. No, that's smart, man. You don't want to push it or anything. You don't need to do that in prep, especially uh-huh. you with your tree trunks, right? Like there's there's absolutely no need. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I got so lucky the other week when I like hurt. Like I, I ended up having a tear because I had a bunch of blood pooling at the bottom of my hamstring. Yeah. And, uh, and the injury yeah. was like, like the top of my BMO. It just took like five weeks for the bruising to show up. Yeah, it was so, strange. Yeah, so tore something in there. Luckily, it didn't com- it completely tear it off. But even like today, I was, I was practicing posing today, and like my leg is pretty much like all the swelling is gone now. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Actually, like, I don't have one fat leg and one like shorter leg. So, <laughs> yeah, no, and and dude, the reason that it's recovered so quickly or wasn't as bad as it, as it could have been is because you just called it quits and like on the uh, on the quad training, right? Dude, one thing too, though, for this prep for me, like every other prep I've done, I was working as a personal trainer. 
and I was up at like five o'clock in the morning to, to do like fast cardio and then I train my clients and, and do that. I'm sleeping so much and I think it's helping me. Yeah, like, that's a lot. Key. I, think, I think it's helping me hold size too. Yeah, no, I believe it. How many hours of sleep do you get? Like eight and a half or nine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah, like I, I won't, like I have my sleep machine and at times my sleep, like how long I'm actually asleep for. Yeah. And you uh, actually get eight and a half hours. Like no. of actual sleep, like real. Yeah, dude, I won't get out of bed until I. That's do. wild. That's right. wild. Yeah, and because uh, even like if it gets light in my room, like because I have like a mask on, I'll just cover myself over, <laughs> so it's completely dark, and I fall asleep like no problem. So, but yeah, I've been sleeping good, so I think that's helped big like a lot of my recovery. And that's body. unreal. Yeah, that's something I wanted to look into because like a lot of the smart watches now, like Apple watches, I'm pretty sure you can get it to track your sleep and yeah, even Fitbits too. Uh, so so i i'd done that before and after smoking weed yeah so before i used to sleep for eight to nine hours i'd be in bed for eight to nine hours but on my watch i would get between four and six hours of actual sleep because i was just tossing and turning up like every couple hours to pee and just just couldn't couldn't get a solid nice sleep but since i started smoking weed i get like seven to eight hours every night unreal yeah that's really good yeah, no, exactly. Right. So it definitely helps me. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I really want to do, do any of you guys have like smart watches? Yeah. I got the Apple watch. Apple watch. You don't, I, I don't think I've ever seen you wear it. Dude. I, I, I always forget to wear it because it's a pain in the ass at the gym because I didn't have the, um, the stretchy, uh, the wristband. I yeah. just had the one that you had, you had to hook it into. Yeah. Way, you, gotta take that, you gotta take that shit off when you're lifting the ring. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, but me, me and Tara ordered the, the new ones with the stretchy uh, band, so you can just literally slide it like right up your forearm. Oh, oh shit. That's yeah. smart. I never even thought about that, dude. I didn't okay. either, but we I'm got them now. Like, so here's something. I'm getting fit, like, like, maybe to, like tomorrow. Yeah. Because I'm actually like relying on my steps for my cardio. Yeah, man. Yeah, too. I've seen like John Jewett does that. I watched the sweat podcast with him. And that's all he does is just like his steps, no like cardio, like otherwise. That's something I was going to ask you guys. So do you guys like track your activity levels throughout prep? Like, will you have like kind of set activity levels or like do you want to, uh, you, you have set steps that you want to meet along with cardio or like, how do you guys do that? I'm only doing that for cardio. Only counting steps. And like, it didn't even start at that. It was just like, uh, like three 25 minute walks a day. Yeah. And if I didn't do that, then I would have to do cardio at the gym or whatever, right? I just had to like do that amount of time basically. Yeah. And then I kind of just did it. And like I have, like I literally take my dogs from the exact same walk three times a day. Right. So, yeah. so it's the same amount of steps every time. And then, I, and then I just figured out how many steps it was and then just kind of made that my goal. Right. Right. And how many steps is it? I am getting like 12,000 every day. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's solid. A little bit less on training days. I mean, I'm, I'm not resting. On rest days, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's good. How about you guys? Jared, I know you've been walking a lot recently, too. Yeah, uh, I do, like, two to three walks, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. Especially now it's nice out. Like, why not? Yeah, no, and that's what I've been doing for cardio recently is doing yeah. walks in the morning, like, with obviously, weather permitting. Um but yeah, no, I just, I just enjoy getting fresh air as soon as I wake up in the morning. It's just like, you know, it's relaxing going for a walk outside when nobody's out and about either rather than going to my basement and hopping on the bike. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a huge help on the mental health too. Definitely, man. Definitely. Something to look forward to. Right. Yeah. Um, Especially in prep, man. You need everything you can. <laughs> yeah. Even the little things, they start adding up now. Like no, I found like, like well, especially like a day like today, like it wasn't even yet. So it's that was like, beautiful. No, today, it was man. perfect. Yeah. Even, it was a hike. Yeah, like 25 minutes feels like 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. We went for a hike this morning and we forgot that flies existed. And like oh. we were, yeah, dude, the, the flies are out, man. And we yeah. were literally by the water and I had the drone up and I was like focused on flying the drone. And I was literally getting eaten alive. Like Tara and Luke were both next to me, like hitting me and stuff, like trying to get rid of the flies. But dude, I like, and it happens every single year. I forget the flies are a thing. <laughs> and then, like, I'll be like, oh, it's such a sick day out. Like, there's no wind, which is rare. There's no wind. And then you get to a spot, and then you just get eaten alive. And you're like, this sucks. Like, I hate this. It was actually That's ridiculous how many flies. I'll always live in a city. Like, 
I or like kind of or like just outside of one or something. Like I I lived in like kind of a rural area my whole like young life until I was like 22 or 23. And I would never go outside in the summer where I lived because the mosquitoes were so bad and I hated them. So <laughs> yeah. One of my least favorite things in the in the world. I yeah. So living in the city where I'm now, there's none of them in me. Yeah, no big time. Um so prep updates. Mm-hmm. What's... I, just you, I just gave you guys mine. You're Shay, you look skinny as fuck. <laughs> I am <dude. laughs> no, I mean yeah, you look lean though. Is this your, like, your lowest weight now? Yeah, dude, I was um I think last weekend when I checked in I was one one ninety eight yeah. and this weekend I was one ninety five. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I mean like I'm still it? sorry. You feel it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I I like like this week wasn't too bad, but for some reason this weekend, like especially yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I was in rough shape, wasn't I, Luke? <laughs> yeah, dude, you were a rough situation yesterday yeah i was just super <laughs> just pissed off all day and like low patience and yeah but like that's the start of it it's just gonna be that's what it's gonna be like now so mm-hmm. you just gotta do yeah, what you can and like you said like having a routine and doing doing the little things that you do every day that kind of make your day easier you know makes a big difference now so i dropped two pounds from yesterday to today. Yeah, I actually i actually i wrote that down i i wrote down mo four pounds overnight i would say yeah yeah the only good thing that happened today was i took a crazy big draft for my workout and uh i'm gonna post it tomorrow that makes it count though like that's like i even like even that dude like you make like you take like a sick video or a sick picture you see like a little new line and just like that's all you make need. your day there that's all you need that's all you need yeah you know, I, sent, I sent it to my coach and he was like, what the fuck kind of pictures are you sending me in the morning? He was like, you look completely different. Because like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was in the good like change room. And yeah, yeah. He's like, go, he's like, go there in the next couple of days and take a full set of posing pictures. There. <laughs> yeah, your, your lighting is trash at your house. You know, I don't know what to do. Honestly, <laughs> I'm going to tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, but the, the next week is Tuesday. I'm just going to go around my house like a bunch of different places. Take pictures everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. So, that's what you got to do, man. Yeah. I gotta change it up. Yeah, yeah my spot's not too bad. Like it's in my parents' room. And, like they have to. they have a big window, and so like taking it in the morning, like the window faces Signal Hill, so the sun is like right there. So you're getting a lot of natural light that comes directly in, which is which is solid. I might try my back patio because it's like it, the sun comes up on that side. Dude, yeah. I was gonna mention that because Brandon Harding, he's taken all his prep update outdoors. pictures outdoors. Yeah. But Jamie the Giant, those two. Sorry? Jamie the Giant, the UK guy, the big tall oh, guy. He yeah, does yeah. all of these as I do. Do they do weird guys? Weirdos. <laughs> weirdos. Well, Dude, just, it, man, JP, uh, me and Thomas Law were talking about this today. JP has like, the biggest influence ever on all those UK bodybuilders because he's coached all of them at some point. Yeah. yeah. That's why they all train the way they do, like that progressive overload style. They're all like super meticulous, and I'm pretty sure they all fucking work with Bob's in the gym too. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, that's because it's what he does and like all like the baggy clothes and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> that's interesting so um what are the plans for for shows for morgan and luke gladiator atlantics newfoundland yeah yeah that's and, my point and they just well i'm doing the same but and they just moved the toronto pro to december but mm-hmm. now they're having Canadian Nationals where the Toronto Pro was. Right. So they're doing the Canadian Nationals September? 17th. Is that what you're going to do or are you going to do Toronto Pro? I'm doing Canadian Nationals for sure, man. Yeah, dude. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> Wait, so, sorry. Say that again. When are Canadian Nationals? It's just Canadian Nationals. September. When? September. Oh, okay. September 17th. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. I feel like that would be a good one to do, man. Because. Um, yeah, that's the one to do. Yeah. I think I, I think that'll be one. And I, and obviously they they're, they're switching it because Toronto's a pro show. They have a lot of international athletes, and they want to have an expo. They want to make money from it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a way bigger thing. Whereas if they had to like have like no audience at Canadian Nationals, they can still do it just with the competitor because they just want to give out the pro cards and do it for the athletes, obviously, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not gonna, like, they're not going to make much money off it because I doubt. 
you know, by September, they might be able to have like 50% capacity or something in there. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but, how does I mean, the program work for that? Do you need to take overall? Yep. Yeah. Overall on bodybuilding. Yeah. Overall on every category. And that's it. And masters. Canada's and masters. Yeah. Terrible for that, man. Fuck sakes. Yeah. Well, I mean, but now we have Toronto Pro too, and we have Vancouver Pro. Yeah, there's three pro and, cards we can get now. And you can go to North Americans at, at that show. Uh, every winner gets a pro card of every class. And you can also go to Olympia Amateur to get your pro card. Yeah. And Arnold Amateur. Dude, I'm, I'm going to Olympia if I don't get it in Toronto. Yeah. 100%. For the yeah. Olympia and the um, Arnold, do they hand it out for every uh, class? No. no. It's just overall. So North North Americans is the only one that hands hands them out for all the classes. Yeah, and then in the states they have nationals where they hand out yeah. top two in every class. Which top is, two, yeah. You should, you should never be able to really get second place and get a pro card. Yeah, that's yeah. You don't, don't if you're at least win your class, like get out of here, right? Yeah, I don't like the idea of that. None of those guys really end up being much, like for obvious reasons. So yeah, it's strange. Yeah, yeah me where and Luke were talking about. I wouldn't even want to take that, honestly. <laughs> no, man. Like, yeah, I'll take my my second place pro card. Well, dude, where's the glory? Yeah. yeah. Where's the goal? Right? That second, like, and you're like, oh, I'm a pro. Like, that sucks to even say it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Don't, don't, the only way it would make sense is if, like, you had two guys that deserved the first place, and then there you go. Yeah. Then that's, but yeah. that rarely happens. I want, like, personally, like, even if I went to, like, North Americans and, like, won my class, I would still want to win the overall. Yes, exactly. Because, like, that, then, like, you're kind of you're solidifying, like, yourself as, like, mm-hmm. you're probably going to be a good pro. Yeah. You know, if you're the best out of that many people, yeah, you're talking about a show of like 120 like good bodybuilders, right? and that's and that's why the pros that come out of Canada are so top level already, right? Because yeah. there's only yeah. really two or three opportunities to get a pro card here. Yeah, man, it takes a while. Like even like Fouad Abiyad, like he won his class like four or five times before he came. Yeah. yeah, right. Like you know, kept like making it to the overall and not getting it. So by the time he got it, he was a good pro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You get top three and pro show right away. Yeah, and that's what happens. Yeah, so, and that's the way you want it to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why like, in bodybuilding, like, I don't think, like, I was, early on, I was kind of in a rush to turn pro, but, like, my recent years, I haven't been, and obviously, you haven't had a choice because there hasn't been any shows, but, like, you're always getting better, right? So, it's like, you can you can barely turn pro and then still have to take a year or two off before you're a good pro. Yeah. Or you can take that time while you're an amateur get to the point where you are a good pro, go smash a fucking pro qualifier like come to the Rada and yep. then move on with a pro show <laughs> and then go to Olympia and make a huge impact as opposed to just turning pro and then everyone forgetting about you for a few years. For a few and years. And yeah. come back and you're just like a no-name bodybuilder getting like the second call out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, there's definitely something to be said for that too for like motivation as well. Because like if you're just trying to have pro qualifiers like here in Canada and like you're coming up short every time. Like you're going to be a lot more motivated than if you went to like the States and got your pro card at some, like some show. And then like that you didn't even place first in like at North Americans. And then you're like, Oh, well I got this now. Like kind of, kind of where do I go from here? And then you do a show and you don't place well. And then that's kind of like a deterrent. I feel. Well, in the States too, like, so, and like at nationals yeah, and like at same thing with USA is like, I mean, I think about it, like you get the second place in the bantamweight division gets the pro card. Yeah. Yeah. Like his bodybuilding career is over. Yeah. If he takes it, because he's not going to compete competitively as a pro. Never. You know, unless he just switches like men's disease, plastic disease, or something, I guess. And like kind of works his way into that. Like, I guess like there's more options now. But like when you think about it, it's just like, you know, what what's the point, right? It's kind of false hope. Well, yeah. It's just, I mean, they give him away, like almost just to like maybe get more people to do the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Registration is not cheap Mm-mm. for those shifts, right? So, but I mean, it's also a business, and you got to accept that too about bodybuilding. Like people, that's one thing about bodybuilders that does annoy me. I got to say this: this is gonna be a bit of a rant. Um, like people complain about like the politics and, and promoters like wanting to make money and stuff like that. And it's like, first of all, like would you want to do all the shit a promoter has to do for free and not make any money? <laughs> You know, like you know, and they're the ones putting the shows out so you can do them. Yeah. Without the promoters, you have nothing. Like you know, so I mean, people gotta, you know, and these national events and stuff too. Like 
but yeah, like they do things to make more money and they charge you a certain amount to make money because otherwise it's, it's worthless to them. Right. But it's, it's like a give and take situation. Right. Then you yourself, yeah. maybe we got to pay for it. But then if you win, like there, a, a lot of, a lot of rewards can come from it. And like, and those organizations too, like if you are good and they see potential in you, they will support you. Like if you yeah. turn pro and go that route. Right. But I, they, they can't do that for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know? No, hundred percent. No, it's a, no, it's a really good point. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. People get sour over stuff and they just, I know, man. Yeah, you know, it, it, if you don't have the genetic potential and work ethic to be good in this sport, you're just not going to be good. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? And like, but you can still do it and, and <clears throat> have it as a hobby and enjoy it and love it and compete year after year and try to get better. There's nothing wrong with that, but like you're, you're kind of a part of the business at that point. Right. But yeah. if, you, if you enjoy it and they're making money off of you, then it's a win-win, right? hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, so what are your guys' diets? Like, has much changed? Like, how are things looking? I had a muffin and a couple cookies a couple days ago. Yeah, how was that after? Good. Good, eh? It was so good. Yeah. What kind of cookies did you have? I just had a, I had a muffin post-workout. And then I figured out that two chocolate, I was supposed to have two muffins. <laughs> but, but I figured out that a chocolate chip cookie, uh, two chocolate chip cookies is basically one muffin. Yeah, he would take a few calories, and he also increased my carbs with all my other meals and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah. and uh, so yeah, I just had two chocolate chip cookies like with my last meal. Where'd you get the cookies? Tim Hortons. Word. Yeah, I should have had Subway cookies, so I fucked up. You should have, yeah, yeah. definitely should have. Yeah, yeah. but they're so pretty good. The chocolate chip muffin was fucking good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that was yeah. the first time I had off plan in like over a month. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so it was good to have a chance. Opposite that. of me. But yeah, that's one thing for me, man. Like, I don't even want to eat my meals. Like, I'm so sick of eating the same thing. Yeah, man. Like, I'm hungry, but I'm like, fuck. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. this meal's gonna suck. <laughs> like, <you know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing I enjoy is my cream of wheat and banana before I go to bed. Yeah, yeah. that's a yummy meal. Yeah, that's I love that meal. Good. Oh, and my protein shake in the morning. Shout out Jack Factory. Big one for me, twenty percent off. Um, it's code Shay for twenty percent off. But okay, okay. Um, yeah, you Shay's code. He needs. He needs it more. Thank you, thank you. Um, question about the protein shake because I tried that yesterday. So you do ice and do you do water or oat milk or almond milk? What do you put in that? How many fucking weeks are we? Uh, you're six, seven. Yeah, dude, I'm not using no milk. I don't know. You're putting on your story like last week, dude. <laughs> Dude, yeah, dude, I, I've had that shit cut out for over two weeks. Okay. <laughs> this guy. And I, and I, I'm pretty sure I announced it to the world, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you should know. know. Yeah. Okay, uh, but it, regardless, so you use water. Water and ice, man, but you got to find the water to ice ratio is super important when you're just fucking with water because yeah. if you have too little ice or too much ice, you're going to end up with just like an ice block and like some liquid on top. <laughs> yeah. I have a fucking bad time. So. Yeah, because that's kind of what mine turned out like. Like it was, it was like a fine mix between like it was like. Oh, like oh wait, wait, wait! What flavor protein? A vanilla. Yeah, you're gonna have trouble with vanilla. Really? Yeah, vanilla. For some, it's just a texture. Like you kind of know when you look at vanilla, it's kind of a different texture than some of the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Like the salted chocolate caramel and the chocolate peanut butter isolate, they they mix the best. Okay. And the chocolate way too is good. Okay, yeah, I'll have to try those then. Yeah, because I tried the vanilla and it was it was a little weird, but like Yeah, I did the same thing the other day, bro. You can't, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it was like it was nice for a change though, you know what I mean? Like just, oh, yeah, just, yeah. just having yeah. having something different, right? It makes a difference. Um but yeah, so my plan's been the same for three weeks now, I think. Yeah, this three, is the fourth week now, yeah. Fourth week, yeah. yeah. So still feeling that's good, man. So, yeah, no, no, I'm happy. Your, plan, your plan's been the same, but we've added in fat burners. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only change, really. Yeah. Your body's just responding extremely well. Yeah, the Pro Series burn and the uh, the KSM. How is, how is that? I haven't tried the Pro Series burn. It's, it's good, man. It's good. Like, I haven't, like... Does it light you up, though? Sorry? Does it light you up? 
It it does. It like well, but not like too much. Like I don't feel like kind of jittery because I'll take it before I go do my cardio in the morning. Um, but like I'm a lot more alert. Like before I'd be kind of like groggy, like walking for a while. But like I'm up and kind of ready to go when I take it. And I only take half a serving. Like, I'm pretty sure full servings, uh, four capsules, I only take two. So yeah. Yeah. isn't like isn't how many what's a full caffeine like what's a full serving of caffeine that i wouldn't be able to tell you i think it's over like 300 yeah what? really oh it's it's up there oh it's up there the, the bot like there's a lot of capsules in the bottle yeah 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 it's bottle, yeah. yeah it's a big bottle for sure um well yeah. uh i uh added in cardio today first time <laughs> what did you do we went on a hike. So <clears throat> I'm going into uh, 30 minutes of uh, like a strenuous walk every morning. That's what I'm going to do now. That or um, my uh, bike if it's raining out. And uh, yeah, so that's the first day of cardio today. Jeez, and, about this, time. and I've also, this is also the first week with uh, no cheat meal or refeed day. And uh, we're feeling it. What was your last cheat meal? Last weekend, um, burgers. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, and that was like that was a fairly clean cheat meal. That was uh, homemade burgers and homemade fries done in air fryer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. retweet. Yeah, I um, dropped, dropped four and a half pounds. Already? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, because you're you're just under two hundred now, aren't you? Yeah, one ninety nine point eight. Mm. Word. How much? How much do you like Morgan and Luke? How much? Like, would you say, do you think you're like gaining muscle in terms of maintaining muscle compared to someone who's natural, who's like, like, I, I'm sure I lose muscle during a prep. Um, like, yeah. will you guys, will you, <laughs> <laughs> will you guys actually put on muscle or is it mostly just maintaining? I 100% put on muscle. Me too. Yeah. Since I started prep. Yeah. Really? I think for me, it's just been the, like, like I, like I, I can say like I've been 99% consistent on my plan and, I, and I've been, I'm six weeks. I've been prepping for 12 weeks. Yeah. yeah. And like, like been following the plan and, and obviously like, I think just the consistency and like, and I think like the biggest thing is like, you know, especially initially, even up until this point, I would say, cause like now I'm starting to feel the fatigue more so, but like my, I was getting stronger or at least maintaining strength in the gym, like while getting leaner and my weight wasn't moving yeah so, like, to me, I'm like, hmm. I'm, yeah that's right like i'm only down nine pounds from the start yeah that's like me too like exact same thing <laughs> but i was in the same boat i'm down like 20 20 plus since i started yes. um holy fuck. yeah yeah um but when when like probably up until a week or two ago my strength was just going like through the roof yeah, it was. Like I was, I was getting like significantly stronger on like specifically like shoulder press and um, like Smith machine shoulder press and incline chest yeah. press. Like I noticed a big difference there. Like I couldn't keep my, up with him. <laughs> yeah. Like my endurance and strength was just really good on that. And I think that was just because of how consistent I was with my, mm -hmm. with everything really. Like everything was just in like peak kind of like, it was just, everything wow. was good. And you're good off season. Yes. Yeah, and my good off season, yeah, for sure. That's like same thing as me. Like you know, like when you, when you have the ability to start with like, like when you're pretty lean and you're starting to prep with like high food and you're already kind of lean, like you, like we were, like we had abs and stuff. Like you can mm -hmm. see your definition, like sometimes, especially when we're training, like that's like the ideal spot, right? And I think that's like why like we're kind of all having this response because like yeah. a lot of people in like my early years, like I started to prep forty pounds over stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, now it's like yeah, I might have to lose like ten or fifteen. And like, yeah, exactly. You know, and because like, considering that you're actually growing muscle, like, because you're you just have your body in that environment, and like we know how to train better, like, like you yeah. know, like the food, like I think all these things, like all these variables come into play. It all adds up, and that's why you kind of get this response really in prep, and like it's only the last six weeks, like that we're all going to be like, you know, really training and eating to kind of maintain muscle as opposed to yeah. Hundred percent. That but you know, like, like when you train so long like we do, like you need to be able to really push yourself hard in the gym to gain muscle mm -hmm. because like the, the stimulus needs to be so extreme, right? Yeah, I mean, we're just not going to have the energy stores to 
to do that, like to push ourselves like we need to. So you kind of got to switch your mindset into training hard enough to like still like maintain your strength and, and hit the lifts you need to lift. Yeah. But be more concerned that be at that as opposed to just going in there and trying to do a ton of volume to make up for your lack of intensity, right? Like, yeah. Hundred percent. Well, so a point on that or a question: Will you guys? Because I know both you and Luke are big on, you know, training right to failure and past failure on a lot of things. Will you continue to do that now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. Like I'll I'll continue to do drop sets and cluster sets the whole way through, man. I'm not going to change anything. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't do that stuff anymore. Like really, like I might do like one or two drop sets of workout, but. I do more, um, I'm, I'm way more focused on like maintaining my weights than I'm using. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like, cause I'm, I'm training, like I'm basically doing the same workout every time now for every body part. And like, I just think the best idea for me is to just focus on like one or two working sets, like trying to get that, like, you know, heavy weight for 10 or 12 reps. Yep. You know, if I feel like I can do another one, I will, if not, I'll do a back off set and then just move on. Like my workouts, man, are like, 40 50 minutes now even like when i train legs i do quads like six exercises in an hour so i'm only doing like two working sets and just gone right yeah no totally i just asked because like the main thing with or the main thing that people say with training with failure is like you're getting the same like motor unit recruitment for like keeping like one to two reps in reserve as to as compared to zero so like if you're getting the same stimulus from leaving uh, one to two and you're using that glycogen that could have been saved for other exercises you know there's that's getting pretty yeah pretty... but dude, like failure like okay like i'm not I, i'm not in there doing like my two working sets aren't with a partner then i'm doing fourth reps yeah like, like i'm just going to like like I, when i say failure i'm probably really going to like one or two reps in reserve. yeah sure if I'm, doing, if I'm doing squats and i'm like i don't know if i can do one more like i'm gonna rack it with the exception of a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Right. So, so, like, really, it's like, yeah, because when I think about failure, like Luke, like, it's probably more like doing a cluster set for like my last yeah. set or doing a drop set or having like one of you guys doing like a force rep set. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. But if I go just go to failure by myself, I feel like that's, you're probably, you're probably more like one or two reps in reserve. Right? You're yeah. definitely one or two in reserve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, oh, that's yeah. how I feel. No, I agree. But, but um, I think again, like I, for me, like I, I'm, I'm really more focused on like lifting that weight with good form and like just making sure that my muscle feels that stress. Yes, exactly. So, like, in, my, in my mind, I'm like, okay, as long as my muscle feels that, it's gonna, it's gonna stay, mm-hmm. right? But I don't like the my main thing I'm trying to avoid is lifting lighter this prep. Yeah, until like I have to. Right. No, hundred percent. Uh, Jared, how are things with you? What's what's all the news, man? Uh, pretty slow. Just took a week off. Uh, hurt my shoulder probably over a year ago now. Uh, just been training through it, just being a bro. But anyways, uh, took a week off, feeling a little bit better, but it's still not a hundred. So we're going to do like a little deload for probably the next couple weeks. See if I can get it to a hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's smart, man. I did it feel during back today? What's that? How did it feel during back today? Uh, it was a lot better. Uh, like when I used to pull up into a front double, I used to get pain in my shoulder, but I can do that now pain free. So nice. doing a lot more stretching, uh, stretch pre and post. I've been stretching all day, so just kind of keep getting at it. Yeah, and you're going. You're going to massage too, right? You're getting treatment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. That's, good, That's gonna be huge, man. Yeah, it's gonna be huge difference for you. When do you know when you're getting that? I don't. I wait for him to contact me. I actually contacted Chris, uh, Chris Lame. So he'll yeah, he back. actually messaged me, man. He messaged me and asked uh, about you. So I, I'll put in a good word for you, so he'll get you in. I, had, like, I messaged him today, too. <laughs> we got he you covered. Absolutely wreck my shoulder and make it better. I, I, I messaged him about me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to get into him, too, soon. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's smart, though, Jared. Like, you got a big off season coming, so... It's definitely that, you know, you need to be a hundred percent before you, yeah. before you go into it. You don't want to have nagging injuries or anything. Long like, overdue. Like I did it a year ago. Like I should have took time off when it happened, but I just kept training. So yeah, so I'm to let it's, it hard, it's a hard thing to do, but you're doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. You just, you just feel like it's going to like somehow heal itself over time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just like, no, it'll pay off in the long run for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just got to do it, man. It's part of the deal, right? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah definitely. Uh, Morgan, I watched your podcast today. The second one? Yeah, the second one. I Well, I watched the first one too, but okay. I watched the second one today. Um, it was really good. Thank you. Really good, really good combo. And um, the topic, the main topic of, you know, when when you should take PDs and, you know, who they're good for and, you know, all that. Um, I thought it was a really good topic. So I just, that's all I had to say about that. I just, <laughs> all right, I should have done that. Well, we wanted to come out with a bang right for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Or try to grab more attention. Today was like a really nice day out. So I wouldn't say many people saw it, but I think I'm going to repost it again tomorrow because it's, I think it'd be more chill day. Hopefully. Yeah, that'd be a good call. But yeah, we're going to stay consistent with the podcast, man. I'm going to have all you guys on, obviously. Like uh, the idea is like, it's called Young and Hungry because obviously I want to have like kind of fitness, like influencers, fitness entrepreneurs, like yep. fitness competitors, people who are really trying to build a brand and, and, and that kind of thing, right? And uh, just anyone who's kind of just trying to do something different rather than like your regular basic boring life that most people that we see. Nine right? to five life. Those are people I'm interested in talking to and, and motivates yeah, me. Man. That's why, where my interest lies. And I think it will motivate other people because I think the more people that we can motivate to kind of just live their own life and follow their passion and their dreams and try to make a career out of it. Like that's like what I've been able to do so far. And I'm like so freaking happy. I feel so lucky. So I feel like, you know, more people need to be uh, exposed to that and like those possibilities. And, and if, if you're here, if you can hear from people who are in it, like who are doing it instead of people who have already made it. Yeah. You know, I think that will help people because it'll be more realistic. To deal with. Like someone talk about people's struggles and like their past struggles, current struggles, like, you know, all that stuff, like get into it. And, and I think it's just going to be a way for all of us who are kind of in that particular situation to like kind of learn from each other. Yeah, no, 100%, man. And like, it can be almost like intimidating to kind of go your own route rather than sticking to a traditional path, because obviously you see people that have made it on their own and they're successful entrepreneurs and like they got their, they, they did their thing and they succeeded at it. But like, you don't see people who are kind of on the come up with that. And oh. so for someone who's just starting out, that can be really intimidating because you're like, Oh, well, they, they had it lucky. They, they were in this position, that position, and they didn't struggle. Cause you don't, you don't see that. Um, so actually having, you know, people like yourself and Dana who, you know, are in it, that definitely helps a lot. Well, I mean, you see people who are successful already and they just seem so like other, right? Like it's like, yeah. you know, it almost seems out of reach. It's, it's, it's very easy for the general public to just look at someone that's made it and successful and be like, Oh, well, they're lucky. Like, look what they, look what they've got in life. Yeah, mm-hmm. like everything right. fell in the place for them, like da 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 da, da. and then they, mm-hmm. they hear some stories, and you're like, "This is absolutely incredible what some people come from." But yes, man, a lot of times you see that it's of people who came from hardship, yeah, that have nothing in early in their life that developed this drive to want to like just be, they, they they were just never satisfied. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, I think that's the biggest thing, and like I know, like that's how I am. Work from I think Shay, so. Shay, did you just freeze? Yeah, it just froze. <laughs> did all that, that everything freeze or? No, I just, just missed, I just missed like the last oh, okay. probably 20 seconds. I was just talking shit about you. <laughs> it's all good, man. Nothing I haven't heard before. <laughs> I saw you froze, man. I just like literally. <laughs> you just started raining on me. Just tore in. It's, it's, well, it's not going to be in the podcast because it's only recording my screen, so. Sorry, man. I don't know if that's how it works, but that's not. No. I think this, record, this whole meeting is going to get recorded. <laughs> well, you're, we'll see. We'll see. I'm fairly certain, <laughs> fairly certain that that's how it works, but that's fine. Yeah, you're in for an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this far out, six weeks out for you guys, is there things that you guys start to cut out? Say like like I don't know like things I'm, things in your diet I'm, like I'm definitely being a bit more conscious of like my condiment use and stuff. Right. Are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm just like I you know up until like six weeks out I'm kind of just whatever, but like now I'm like just a little bit of that that like spicy mustard on my food. Like I'm mm-hmm. only using like one or two Splenda now, like instead of using two or three at a time. Uh, 
I, I haven't been drinking any diet drinks at all. You know, yeah. I don't ever have those, but I don't chew any gum. Coffee's been black for a long, like two weeks now. So I, I don't feel like I'll have to get any more extreme with that stuff. You know, like, I, honestly, for me, I feel like one more cut in carbs, uh, maybe like a little bit of out of, added output, and I'm going to be ready. Yeah, your body's responding well, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I got tons of time. Like, and, and for me, like every time I make a change, like my body changes for like three weeks. You see it. You see it right away. Yes, man. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I feel like the next food cut, I'm going to be suffering and we might have to add some cardio, maybe start doing a bit of Stairmaster or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be ready. So, that's good though. You're in a good spot. It's like, like, are you, are you comfortable where you are? Like, in terms of like, you know, you're, you're not really worried about anything. You're pretty, pretty stress-free. You're comfortable with the plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not like, like I said, that was like probably the first like, kind of challenging day I had. Sure. I just felt like empty in the gym, you know? And like when I was walking my dogs and stuff, like I was just dragging my feet. Like I just felt like shit. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like this isn't hard for me mentally. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's no other <laughs> option. Right. So it's like if my coach gives me a plan and drops the food, then that's fine. Like I, you know, I I know I need to be leaner than I am. <laughs> right? Has has this has this prep been the most confident prep you've been in? Dude, easy. Mm-hmm. It I shows, just, man. I just have confidence in what I'm doing. Exactly, and you have confidence in your coach. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everything is how I would do it. Exactly like, right. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, and and he's back at me and. And yeah, I mean, I just, and, and when you know, you can like, if you're not sure about something, you can bring it up to someone and like get a yep. full explanation and talk it out and yeah, you know, they'll, see, they'll see your side of it and, 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 you know, all that makes a difference, but, and just my situation, like I said, like, you know, working from home, like just like having my schedule perfectly the way I want it. Like, um, it, you know, I'm just like, just in a good environment. Yeah. Right. And it's the first time. And, and I think it's just showing like, and I'm and I'm really happy like doing this process, like enjoying it as opposed yes, to like, wish I could eat some shitty food, like yeah. oh, this is so hard. Like I hate doing cardio, like you know, there's I don't feel like any negativity towards the prep. Yeah, I feel like you you were wait you've been waiting a long time to prep too. So that definitely plays a part in it too. Like you're itching to do this prep. So it's not like it's not like it was coming up, you're like, ah, I gotta compete. It's like you were you were ready to kick down the door. Yeah, like I've been working towards this prep for a long time. Like, yeah, I'm not really fucking around too much. Like, you know, like yeah, trying, you know, trying to trying to be in the best situation that could be leading into. It. Yeah. So, so now, now it's like, okay, well, and, and now I'm actually seeing like, thank God I did all that because it's paying off now. Like, yeah. you know, and and like getting leaner now and actually seeing the muscle I put on is like, I mean, I, like I couldn't, I can't not be happy. Like, no, it's extremely rewarding. Yeah, like I'm like. Like seeing my waist come in and like and really seeing like the, the size of my lats, my chest and shit. Yeah. I'm just like, oh fuck. Like <laughs> me and me and Luke were talking about the t- that today actually. We we're talking about like your midsection and your waist and your lats yeah. and how much that has actually played a part in like your actual kind of overall look. Like your lats coming up, it's made your waist look smaller. Your waist is look, waist is coming in anyways, and your midsection just looks good in general. So yeah, I think like my lat shoulders and like my quads really make my waist look smaller now. Like and it's just I'm, I'm way more proportionate up top, like compared to you are, man. Yeah. Obviously, right. So, you, you have a much better flow to your uh, physique now. Yeah. I got like actual V taper. Like there's a, yes. there's, there's X frame there. Like, yeah. you know, my, my biggest concern with myself, I would say would be my posing. Honestly, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm That's... still, I'm still trying to really work on that a lot. Like I'm posing every day and just learning. I don't expect myself to like be, like a crazy good poser, like like I'm Luke Snow, for example. Like I think Luke, you're unreal, but I just want to be able to lock in my mandatories, like you know, have a respectable posing routine, like and and I'm good to go. You know, what I mean? yeah. But, let's let's set in stone right now, two days a week, where the three of us meet for posing. All right, man. I'm in for sure. Like let's I want to be it. like pre Grammy. Like that's my goal. Like posing routine. It's like not really my thing, but like, like yeah, as as but you want to be able to nail those. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, like exactly. Like I go out and I battle. Like that's what yeah. I do. Like I yeah. want to go out and stand next to guys and make them look like I want to look like a fucking piece of stone. Yeah. Like, you know, and just fucking mog everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and then that's all I care about. So like my mandatory's got to be like perfect. And like that's, yeah. that's all I care about. Yeah. Dude, all the same big Grammys um, posing routine at the Olympia was actually like 
it was fun to watch like he was like getting the crowd hyped up and like yeah. playing the ear guitar and stuff like that <laughs> if you yeah. played the ear guitar on stage i would actually cry like <laughs> i'll play a little bit at the end <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'll have like a really serious like gladiator theme posing routine and then right at the end as i'm walking off right. just start yeah playing. little guitar solo <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> That would be amazing. Um, one thing that I was going to mention, and it's just like, we just got past the topic, but I wanted to mention it, is like with the, like, two weeks prior to this, when like everything was going like super well, my strength was going up. That just kind of made me realize like, yeah, I had a good off season, but it could have been even better. You know what I mean? Like, oh, if, yeah. if, yeah. if I had lost, like, I, that, like, I mean, I, I was down like, 10 12 pounds at that point and my strength is still going up like that just kind of goes to show for me that like like this off season coming oh, could be even better and like just just dialing things in more like so many little things like that you you don't think like when you're in, in, in the off season you're like uh, it's not really a big deal like you're in the off season like it's not going to make a huge difference but the consistency and everything is just it's 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 honestly night and day with training Dude, every day yeah. matters in the sport. Yeah, yeah. If you don't think it does, and, but like we all sacrifice days sometimes. Yeah, and it's okay because that's life. Every everyone does that. Mister Olympia does that. Hundred percent. You're gonna lose days, but the thing is, like, you don't you don't want to lose days you don't have to lose. No. Yeah. Where that, that I think that needs to be your biggest concern, like the off season and stuff like that, and and you know even if you have like little like for me, I, I would consider like the summer like a bit of a slump in my off season, like. You know, but I kept my shit together pretty good. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like five, six days a week, I was focused as hell, training, eating. And then, you know, I would go out a little bit, like eat a couple of cheap meals, maybe have a day where I'm late three times or something like that, right? But, yeah. you know, if you're 85%, 90% on track, like you're good for a period of time. But, you know, you got to really pick your times where you're like that. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Live, live, gotta... like, live like one or two months at a time, but like 10, 10 months of the year, you better be on track. Yeah. 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 Like when, when you have the opportunity to, you know, be on track, like you got to dial it in and take advantage of that. And that's, yeah. Anyways, realization I've had this prep. Dude, that's, that's it. It's all learning, man. Like that's, what yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like how many shows would I do? I'm like, I'm like the next off season I'm going to take so serious. And, <laughs> but every, but every off season I took a bit more serious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. and then from 20, better, better. Like, not 2021, I was pretty much like, like being like a pro body. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, no, 100%. You know, so yeah, like that's even I'm excited for the next off season, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what I've got in my head. That's what's kind of pushing me yeah. through this prep. It's like I get through this now, and I'm thinking too about like the post show rebound and like how sick I'm gonna look, how good that's gonna feel, <laughs> and then dialing it in on the off season and just getting yeah. huge. You gotta capitalize, right? Because yeah. post, post show is the time, man. Yeah, and that's that's when a lot of magic can happen for you, like, like serious rebound games so yeah but no definitely my off season is probably not going to be until the fall or winter but i can't yeah well i mean me too like i'm i'm planning on doing the um the toronto pro qualifier at the end of november so yeah the natural pro qualifier natural one yeah so yeah you'll get like a month like how long will you so how long will you take it like in between to like kind of chill out so we, we, we talked about the plan the other day and it's exactly what we say, 20 weeks between or 16 weeks between 19, 19 weeks between the two shows. So we'll take eight weeks of like a reverse and kind of maintenance plan and then do like a uh, eight week prep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good plan. Yeah. So I had a question for you. So uh, <laughs> will you do nationals regardless of your placing at provincials? um well the plan is like, wh what do you mean by that like placing like i'm doing nationals men's physique i'm not doing classic um yeah so i i think i think like just by seeing like when ashton competed at nationals and how big the guys were um in terms of in terms of men's physique i think like i'm kind of there but like i think classic is just a whole whole different ball game for me so you're not even a try, you're not gonna compete and try to find out. Well, I mean well, it depends when the time comes. Yeah, like, like you said, you're going all the way up there. 
He's he's going to be doing both. Man. And not just <laughs> he'll be doing both. <laughs> it it depends. I've already been thinking about this. It 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 depends. It depends on how the show goes here. I mean, I still have to place like top three or whatever. So is you'll it top fine. three? Yeah, you'll be fine. Top three to qualify. So there's not not many people are going to touch you in natural classic physique. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, never say never. No, that's true. Yeah. You don't know who's showing up, man. That's true. That is true. We're, we're Listen, prepping to win. I thought I There's had, always a couple guys. I had an option in the bag. <laughs> this is going to be a good show, man. It's going to be a good show. I'm excited. I'm really excited. It's going to be small but competitive. I think Lee Hayward's competing in uh, Yeah, I think so, man. I, I that's, think that's so. the guy who's in happening natural, here last year. Natural. In natural. So you're talking about a guy that's used tons of juice. And he's competing in natural. Who's this? Loose skin. Lee Hayward. He's he's fucking massive on YouTube. Didn't he commentate our show in 2019? Yes, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's competing, man. Listen, that guy knows who he's at. <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. He knows, yeah. How, to he knows how to get in shape. The, yeah, the unfortunate, unfortunate thing for him is age and all of his loose skin on his midsection. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got that old man muscle, man. <laughs> got the density. You got that old man, old enhanced muscle. Yeah. yeah. You got some extra muscle cells from GHG back in the day and shit. <laughs> Arms are yoked. That should be interesting. When he, when he curves up, man, he probably, got some, he probably got some like secret peak week plan that like, none of us know about. It's like old. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be back with a bottle of wine. All you guys are going to be tripping out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know what the fuck is going on. He's gonna come out shredded, fucking full, like Ronnie Coleman. Baby. Legit, legit. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie <laughs> Coleman, dude. <laughs> Just like Ronnie. Yeah, he's gonna get hired at the Milano Tan. Get right there. Yeah, oh, <laughs> he's been on Milano Tan for the last year. Just getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we hate where you see this man. I love you. You're a great guy. We're just messing around. Yes, so I'm pumped that I saw actually that D was doing that because he's an old school guy, hardcore shit, been around for so long. And yes. he's someone I should have in my podcast actually because as far as his fitness industry stuff goes, he's made a ton of money. In it. And, uh, you know, honestly, he knows what that, man. I'll do with Lee, man. Nothing but respect for that guy. Yeah. Can't, can't wait to see what he brings to this stage. It's going to be great. Yeah. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good show all around, I think, in all, in all categories. Yeah. So. What's the women's looking like? Is there a lot of competitors for that, or there was a lot of a lot of girls drop out, unfortunately. But oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many girls are going to do it. So I don't know what the fuck is going to happen with that now, but we'll see. Like it's uh, there's still some good competitors competing. I think uh, bikini would be like packed for sure, isn't it? Like- and a lot of bikini girls dropped out. Really? Mm-hmm. Um... Interesting. Yeah, this is pretty much just like our show and a few other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty very, much just us. Yeah, it's pretty local. <laughs> pretty local. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to do Atlantic and then I'm going to come home and just eat wherever the fuck I want for a week and just hop on stage. I'll still look pretty good, man. I'll look be a monster. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be like 295. <laughs> <laughs> just like full as shit. Yeah. I'll get Jacqueline to make a bit of a bit like bigger trunks for me to cover my boots a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I probably won't have my full ass like ripped out. I'll just be like the very like bottom like half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> so how many how many weeks will you have from well, you don't know what show you're doing in the fall yet, do you? For the yeah, fall. Seventeenth. September seventeenth. Oh, right. You said that. Yeah, okay. No, yeah, no, let me let me check how many weeks I have because uh We'll make our plan right now. So well, we'll all be like in the app eight, season, right? Eight weeks, now. right? One is eight weeks. One, two. Um, Luke is uh, the bench. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, yeah. I don't know. So I gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come off everything a week before Atlantics, I guess. Like, uh, we'll set most stuff, and then I will just. Uh-oh. Do the new flange. Am I frozen? No, you're good. You're good for me. Yep, you're good. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
then I'll do the Newfoundland show and then I'll just uh just kind of chill out for a couple of weeks and then do a do a six week prep in the nationals I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll have to do. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Is the uh is the Ben Weeder uh natural show going ahead in September? Do you know? You heard anything on that? I haven't. No. It's in the States. Is they move it going in the States? They move it to the States? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because oh. that's like technically like a North American like natural event. Yeah. So yeah, it's, they move it to the States. It's not, it's not in Canada. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. That's yeah, that. Go to a little road trip for you? <laughs> yeah. Not likely. <laughs> yeah, not likely. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. me and Taylor talked about that. Like if the Toronto Pro Qualifier didn't go ahead, we were going to like go down and just do like a national show in the States. Just to get on a national stage this year. Well, Ben Wyatt would be the one to do that's actually natural. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one. Really. The only North Americans. Uh-uh. Yeah. Anyways, I just want to, regardless, I just want to step on a national stage. and. So you're going to, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll do that one in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. So cause... Cause there's a good chance I'll come. Yeah. Yeah, especially if Chloe's living here and she can, like, stay with us. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be sick, dude. Yeah, I'm just yeah. For the weekend, man. I love trauma. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, trauma's great. Yeah, it's good time. Have some fun in Toronto. Yeah, we'd be on a celebrating after that. Yeah, big time, big time. Hopefully, I'm not program by Yeah, hey, <laughs> that, that's a yeah, goal. that'd be nuts. That'd be nuts. All right, boys. Well, I had to get something to eat here. I'm starving. Yeah. Um, it's good Potter. Good Potter. Good, Potter. good chat. Good chat for sure. Um, hit the people with some updates and uh yeah thanks for coming on and we'll do another one soon eh yeah absolutely sounds good all right appreciate your time boys all right later on all right take care guys peace